there's no way they're going to put out a movie that's just a bunch of pretty people having a good time. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I am Jen. This is James, and this is Fundy Fridays. <laughs> and on our channel, we talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, American conservative politics, pop culture and gay stuff. So uh, today we're going to have some fun. Um, I thought that we would hop on the Barbie trend, but yeah. in a way that I don't think has been done before. We're going to be reacting to Ali Beth Stuckey today instead of Girl Defined or Paul and Morgan because there's already some amazing reactions to them online. You've probably seen them by now. Um, so we're going to talk about Ali Beth today and We've never actually reacted to her yep. at all. We have not covered Allie at all on this channel. Um, and I do plan on doing a like regular episode about her with a full biography and like going through all of her videos and just, you know, that I will do that someday. But today I thought this would be fun to document our first time watching her channel. We are 100% copying off of Jordan and McKay today. We are going to just be in the corner reacting to the video, but hey, they have a really good format. And so I'm not out here trying to reinvent the wheel, man. Times are tough. I'm, I'm going with what works. If you haven't already, please consensually smash that like and subscribe button. Uh, leave a comment and um, also do go watch Jordan and McKay's video where they react to Girl Defined reacting to Barbie because it's fucking bananas. So, yes. Are we ready? What do you think we're going to get into? Um, Ali Beth Stuckey, yeah. she's a conservative commentator. I don't know in what capacity, but this little show that she has that she does daily um, talking about pop culture and politics it looks like it's sponsored by or is some sort of affiliation with the blaze yeah. um which is like an up-and-coming conservative like channel i believe it it's was not glenn fox beck's news company. yes it's glenn yeah. beck's company and so he either left or got fired yeah from i was fox. gonna say i don't think he does anything with them anymore i don't so, know if he like sold out but i don't think he works there anymore so that's very interesting like, we should do a video about about Glenn Beck. Glenn's on my list. I was say I was gonna say I considered today kind of a teaser for what I hope all y'all who've wanted it. Trust me, I've been pushing her. I want the Ali Beth episode too because it's gonna be a while, but she, I will get it for you. Don't worry. I feel like she's kind of what I would call Ali Beth in my opinion is kind of, okay. She's kind of where I thought Tommy Lauren would be right now. Like she kind she's of sees like, all of Tommy Lauren's momentum and just ran with it because I ain't heard hide nor hair from Tommy in ages. Well, she got in trouble because she was like pro-choice. Yes, I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, I yeah. haven't kept up with her admittedly. She, she also went no on the Daily meat. Show and said, what did the KKK do? What did the KKK do? That is not, look, we'll go around in circles. Did you say, what did the KKK do? No, what did they do? When you're saying, listen, listen, Trevor. So, oh, yeah. Ugh, um, but, yeah, but, so Ali Beth, Allie, she's yeah. like your, sorry, she's your Yo, classic... Please. Mean girl. Like, if she was not doing this, she'd be fucking... She'd be selling Monat and... I think that's how it's pronounced. If it's not, Being abusive in medical settings. That's probably <laughs> what her job would be. And I will say that, like, whereas Tommy Lauren would, like, be edgy and, like, cuss and get, like, really in your face. Uh -huh. She's got this, like, well, I'm better than you. Like, her fucking... Well, you'll see it in a second. But her shirt says, raise a respectful ruckus. She's one of those, like, she's really into that respectability politics bullshit. Yeah. And so it'll be fun to, to take her on. Yeah, she's she's interesting, I'll say. She's good at this. She knows she knows how to rile people up. She knows how to say things to keep her name in the news. Um, so I'm, I'm looking like, forward to this. I'm not saying she's unintelligent, mm -mm. but, like, there is faux intellectualism going on yeah. here. Like, there's a reason why Paul and Morgan and Girl Defined and all them, like, look to her as, she's like, they're me. She's like the Fundy yeah. Fridays of conservatives. Like, she's like an outspoken, like, charismatic, like, Very smart, bold. bold, like, argumentative woman, yes. right? And I often, I tell James all the time, like, thank God I'm a leftist. <laughs> if you had my anger and my, like, audacity, yeah. but on the right side, yeah. Okay, so the title of this video is, Is Barbie Secretly Conservative? Um, and we have both seen Barbie. We saw it opening night. Yep. 
And, uh, no, I, I, I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think it's secretly conservative. But. Not, not what I got from the experience, I'll say that. The long-awaited Barbie movie is finally here, and apparently it is way more insufferable than people expected, but... I'm already, I'm already, like... Um, nine seconds. It's actually more insufferable than people we thought. We made it nine seconds. You know, she probably watched Sound of Freedom just fine. We've got an analysis for you from producer Bree and from me on that. Also, we'll be talking about the backlash to country music star Jason Aldean's ah! song, Try That in a Small Town. Why is he being called pro-lynching? Also, <laughs> I think we just so, got ourselves way in over our head. So, this is... The Barbie thing was what? clicked. I'm going to say it now. She clickbaited the hell out of us. Well, we're going to watch it. Maybe we're here. we'll change the title. This may go far. Yeah, this may have started as a Barbie thing. I don't know. That That's why I'm wearing the, the Trixie See Mattel thing. See how far you go down the road. Also, the myth that you see circulating that Governor DeSantis in the Florida curriculum is somehow pro slavery we've got to debunk all that this episode is brought to you by our friends at good ranchers go to goodranchers.com yes! good Alley for a discount check. company okay this is how you know you've fallen is when you are sponsored by the fucking good ranchers i don't now listen i feel like you're about to kill our chances with good ranchers i'm not saying good ranchers is a bad company i'm just saying that bad people are sponsored by them okay Matrix.com code alley. Good. Yeah, I don't want meat sent to me in the mail. You know what I do want, though, is a protective phone case from Casetify. Once again, we'd like to take a moment and thank the sponsor for today's video, Casetify, and let you all know that you can go to Casetify.com slash Fundy Fridays right now to save 15% off your next order. You know, it is just so nice to be working on another video with you again, Bar. We don't have the rights to that. Now, Jen and I have been working with Casetify for years, and they're so iconic that really we knew about them long before that, too. And there's a reason why we love them so much. They offer top shelf, innovative designs, and fun accessories. These cases aren't just pretty, like my wife. They're also tough, like my wife. Casetify's beautiful designs pack a protective punch. Take, for example, these Impact Series cases. They offer up to 11 and a half feet of drop protection. So whether you're riding horses or just doing beach, Casetify's got you covered with optimal sleekness. Pretty like a doll, tough like an action figure. That's Casetify. And these cases are so customizable that around here we like to say they're not just cases, they're canvases. This is one of my favorite cases. I wear it all the time. I love it because it's got a Luna moth and it's nice and spooky and cute. Lo lots of pink, moons, totally my aesthetic. And I picked this one because it matches my Mojo Dojo Casa House. Plus, it's a collaboration with YouTuber Brittany Broski. Yeehaw! And finally, I chose this one because it's psychedelic and cute. And it actually is from the artist Marta Olga Clara, who uses bright colors that are filled with happiness and love. And they're so cute and protective, it's hard to believe that Casetify's cases are made of 65% recycled materials. So you're getting a premium phone case without having to live a life in plastic. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> Jeez, you're really good at this whole sponsored ad read thing. <laughs> well, thanks. It's easy when your job is phone. Oh, I love you, Ken. I love you. Mm. So once again, we'd like to remind all of you that you can check out casetify.com slash Fundy Fridays right now to save 15% off your next order. And now back to the video. It's so ridiculous that this is even a thing. And if you don't know, you will. So isn't it so, aren't people who hate racism just like so ridiculous and you know what I've seen now, too? Like, the transition from chronically online to now mean the opposite of what it was supposed to mean? Because yeah. now if somebody's, like, advocating for rights, they're like, ah, chronically online. That's how I fucking feel about her. She's trying to gaslight us. Yeah. It's not a big deal. It's just a song. Like, what are you guys mad about? That's why she's so effective and irritating is because she does know how to use, like, the culture very, very destructively. Yeah. She's good at this. She's a um, good you, communicator. You care about that? You yeah. think that's... Oh, it hits you right in the, like, sixth grade unpopular. Like, oh, my it, God. Like, Trigger, oh my God. I'm, I'm a triggered like, snowflake, Allie. 
Ugh. It's, Get the it's, fuck out of here. She knows what she's doing. But... The song is literally inciting violence. Yeah, it's if and then you and then you look at the song and you're like, oh wait, no, nah, this is this is this is bad. You shouldn't sing this. This is very, very... It's not even a good song. Jason Aldean sucks as an artist. Let put... me just come right out and say it! Yeah, and it... it I'm sorry. It's racist. You put the BLM headline in the video. Who's that guy that video. everybody likes now? You knew. Tyler Childers. Yeah. Yeah, Tyler Childers. That's who you should listen to. He's got to. the gay video. That's a good one. Jason Aldean is a country singer, and he performed a song, or he released a song in May called Try That in a Small town may 19th of this year and then the music video premiered july 14th 2023 and it was after the music video premiered i guess a few days after that that the song started stoking a lot of controversy because of its content because i want to put her in like fast forward she's taking too long <laughs> she's a bit like and i know i can't say anything because long-winded is kind of my shtick too but like she gives a lot of lead in. I feel like we could have been to the point a couple minutes ago. Because of its, its lyrics. Now, right now, it's got over 15 million views on YouTube, the music video. It is also the number two most played song in the U.S. on Apple Music. It's climbing the charts largely because of this controversy. People are calling the song racist white supremacist um pro lynching so let me read you some of the lyrics that people are calling so racist and white supremacist sucker punch somebody on a sidewalk carjack an old lady at a red light pull a gun on the owner of a liquor store you think it's cool well act a fool if you like cuss out a cop spit in his face stomp on the flag and light it up yeah you think you're tough and then here's the chorus well try that in a small town see how far you make it down the road around here we take care of our own you cross that line it won't take long for you to find out i recommend so let me explain something i All of that happens in small towns. Yes. Like, people, like, liquor stores and, like, small town gas stations get robbed, like, every Wednesday. Well, what's not being talked about is how this song is literally just full of dog whistles. Yes. And the whole thing is, like, trying, basically, they're, it's against BLM. Like, the whole thing is, like, saying, like, yes, the carjacking of old lady at a red yeah. light, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But like in the video, you know, they're playing footage of like riots that are in response to mm-hmm. police brutality yeah. and other atrocities very, very that we commit against um, things, minority individuals. And it's just also like Jason Aldean's a fucking poser. He is, does not live in a small town. It's, it's very much, it's like when John Cooper was like, I had to get out my AK to protect my house. Kenosha, yeah. Wisconsin. I'd, I'd do it. Yeah. Like, it's they're not coming for you. You don't need to worry about it. Yeah. It's the same fucking old people that were complaining on Facebook that the um, refugees were going to come to their town. No, they're not. They're not coming to bumfuck wherever you live, yeah. dude. And you've got plenty of your own problems to deal with without, like, being like, oh, and, you know, by the way, you're probably comparing yourself to a large city whose taxes, like, support a lot of your infrastructure and things that you, you know have they but hate still. cities but that's what's paying for everybody in a state exactly the cities but it's also like we don't even have actual democracy in this country and the shit that we vote on oftentimes doesn't even fucking do anything or we don't get to vote on the shit that would affect everyone and there's also voter suppression which is has a long racist history so it's not like people aren't trying to fucking do something about it it's Try that in a small town. Got a gun my granddad gave me. They say one day they're going to round up. Well, that bleep might fly in the city. Good luck. Try that in a small town. So I'm realizing I've never actually listened. That yeah, I only know the, song. the like when people make fun of it on TikTok. Yeah. Should we watch the video to see what's going on? So we just off camera yeah. watched the video and um, yeah, it's still racist. Like, yeah. He knows what he's doing, and I don't have to pretend he doesn't. I. It's not... He didn't specifically say this, but, like, the shit that he's talking about, it's like, you're describing sundown towns. Yeah. Which still exist. Yes. Like, black people are still routinely brutalized in the street. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not... We didn't solve racism, no. Allie. Like, this shit is still happening, and this is a part of it. 
I think it's a it's really problematic to kind of frame these types of settings as a good thing. Like, oh, try that here. You won't get away with it because we all look out for each other. Well, you look AKA out. AKA we all shoot people. It's like. You look out for certain people. Yeah, there's just. You don't get to pretend you're better than anywhere else just because. You... Small towns are just better at hiding their problems. Yeah. Like where I'm from, like, yes, lots of poverty, mm-hmm. lots of um, abuse, lots of drugs. Drugs are a huge issue teen in Teen pregnancy, towns. like. Lack of local infrastructure, things closing down, lack of jobs. People neglecting their kids, but you just don't talk about it. Yeah. Like, there is shit in small towns, the same as everywhere else. It's just like... We're well, better damn. than like, we're better than these large cities that are Okay, you fucking millionaire, Jason Aldean. Yeah. I don't... Like, okay, and your people are at fucking insurrections. Like, yeah. I don't want to hear about it. Everybody's got problems that on repeat and then you've got the music video that in the background you do see some uh, different riots that are reminiscent of 2020 2021 and the different uh, reports of violence that we've seen it seems increased dramatically over the past few years it seems it seems yeah where's the numbers and here is a clip of that music video that people are so upset about mom's demand action she blocked me on twitter a long time ago i think like 2017 um she took issue with the lyrics since is it mom's demand action about like gun violence yeah i believe they are aldine survived the las vegas mass shooting uh she posted the lyrics and said uh jason aldine who was on stage during the mass shooting at a las vegas concert in 2017 that killed 60 people and wounded over 400 more has recorded a song called try that in a small town about he and his friends will shoot you if you try to take their guns that's not what he said yes it is yes it is ali's trying to be like <laughs> like trying to be like a sarcastic snarky like it's not what he said that's literally what he fucking said about a gun my granddad gave me they say one day they're gonna round up well that bleep might fly in the city good luck try that in a small town i have my grandfather's gun that i will use if you try and round it up yeah try that in a small what do you think he's implying when he says try that in a small town Mm -hmm. he's talking about violence against somebody else Mm -hmm. like that he's not saying try that in a small town (laughs) we'll say something smart to you no he's talking about actually fucking shooting somebody yeah he's talking are you fucking ignorant like oh my god Police reform activist Brittany Packnett Cunningham accused the singer of not telling the truth about shootings in small towns, saying that most mass shootings occur in small towns. She said Uvalde, VA Tech, Newtown, uh, Parkland, all of these were small towns. Most mass shootings occur in small towns. Your listeners are dying. Now, this is not true. She may have been referencing um, an AP report in 2018 that said that 9 out of 10 of the deadliest school shootings in the U.S. took place in a town with fewer than 75,000 residents. Um, And the vast majority of them were in cities with fewer than 50,000 people. But as far as mass shootings go, it is not true that most of those are happening in small towns. So 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 you just admitted it's not his problem. So why is he friggin' singing about it? I know, but it's still the fact that she's like, okay, but those were school shootings, so those don't count. Yeah. What? I'm not worried about any of this. She's... I'm not worried about shit. <laughs> but I love that. It's like, like... Well, actually, it was it was in school shoot. What? Can't, wh- what about the sanctity of human life here? Well, and again, I feel like it's just, you just gave up the goat. This isn't your problem to talk about. Towns, according to C- uh, CBS, for mass shootings in which four or more people are hit by gunfire, that's how it's defined. In all of the United States, sh- Chicago has the greatest number of any city large I just or- want to say that it's fucking racist anytime a conservative wants to talk about Chicago's gun violence to yeah. prove a point. Just saying. I'm also, hold on, I think she's going to say Chicago has more of these types of mass shootings than any town large or small. Yeah, uh, yes, it will have more than small towns. It's much larger. There's more people. Maybe if we actually cared about our citizens and helped lift them out of poverty, then we wouldn't have crime at this scale. If conservatives put the same amount of energy into proving that everything is Chicago's fault, 
uh, if they would put that energy into actually fixing this, then it would it would have been fixed like a decade ago. Injured. We know this. Okay, this is gaslighting. We know where the violence is happening. I said it earlier. I said it earlier. She knows how to use the words in a way. Fellas, is it it's... gaslighting to die in a mass shooting? <laughs> Say the words, but don't know what it means. Country music industry backlash. She's just going to read tweets and be like, no, it's not. The liberals Comparison are not to rap. Oh my you. god, don't you dare fucking bring up any any rapper. I have no interest it's, There's in so this. much violence in rap music. From you. Now anyway, back to Jason Aldean's country song where he talks about shooting anyone who looks at him funny. And that is Patriot. You hit your mic. It's Patriot Mobile. Patriot Mobile is hey, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider offering like dependable nationwide... Sure this one was like called a scam. But it's the most replayed spot. Is, is People the want to get that Patriot Mobile code. They're getting their Patriot Mobile phones. Well, you don't want the globalists to to have long-distance phone calls. <laughs> get Patriot Mobile. Let's talk about Barbie. Now, Let's. I did not see Barbie myself, and I, Barbie. and I will not see Barbie. So I'm just letting you know that. But uh, producer Bree has been one oh, like we... the other girls. I, I don't see Barbie. I don't do that. I just clean my gun. That was the weirdest. It was like the opposite of every disclaimer I've ever heard. I just want you to know up front that I'm not going to interact. I'm not going to see it. I'm not going to interact with this topic now or ever whatsoever. Let's talk about it. I'm not interacting with it. I don't know anything about it. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want you to tell me anything about it. I don't want to know who's in it. Margot who couldn't care less. Real OGs know that Ryan Gosling was on Goosebumps. Funny to see, oh, or ha yeah, she's been talking about Barbie for a long time. She's been really excited about seeing Barbie. She's like, oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite directors. And I was like, no one says that unless you went to USC, which she did. <laughs> That's a very USC oh, graduate. Only people from USC can like Greta Gerwig. Do it thing to say that I went to the University of Southern California and I lived in Southern California and out there we have favorite directors. So Greta Gerwig, right? What a weird insult. It feels like we she have, was insulting. We have favorite directors here at you when I went to USC. I feel like she's trying to insult USC by saying that they enjoy film. No, I think she's trying to be better than other people. Oh, okay. I thought it was the other way around. I thought she was making fun of them for being elites with favorite directors. I just don't get it. I just don't get the... <sighs> Who is this person? This is producer Bree. Oh. I who agree. apparently likes Greta Gerwig, but has to be conservative enough to be on this show. So She has directed, well, she, the most notable thing she directed was the a new adaptation of Little Women, okay. which I thought was brilliant. Which I was, like Little well, Women. I haven't seen it. Beautiful touches to it. Argue Lady Bird She's and great. So you were hopeful for Barbie that it would be good. She's also the type to be like, you know, back when feminism really mattered when it was about you know, yeah. little women time period. They always do shit like that, but then back they're when, like, back when women, modern feminists. Back when women really were oppressed. It's like, okay, you're not fucking oppressed, you fucking, uh, she, no, <laughs> you rich, white, conservative cis she woman. She needs to acknowledge her own oppression and then realize that she's in the blender with everyone else. I was so hopeful. Were yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, that it would be good? Yeah. Yeah. Well, other people saw it before you did, yeah. and I'm sure you saw some of the commentary online that mm -hmm. it was, you know, a very explicit progressive agenda, which we'll get into. But the marketing for it, leading up to it, you've got Margot Robbie, and you've got Ryan Gosling. It's almost like they bait and switched you like you did with this fucking episode. Mm -hmm. Like... I really like both of them a lot and they did a really good job of making you think this is just going to be a fun movie that is over the top and really colorful movies are not allowed and to but i those. knew i'm like it we don't produce as a country that she said though it, it was, was a fun over the top and colorful movie it was it was all of those things it just drives me fucking batty because like if these people would realize that patriarchy harms everyone all genders and that's one of the things that was discussed in the movie um which I think they're definitely not going to talk about. Like, I don't know h how m much it's possible to spoil this movie or not, but we all know from the trailer that Barbie and Ken go to real world. Um, and basically Ken discovers patriarchy because in Barbie land, they don't have that. Okay. It's also, it also discusses that, you know, the, the issues with masculine identity, that's not really built on anything when you don't have any mm -hmm. achievements or skills or, or, any you know anything to identify with you start just taking pleasure in or you 
you start just taking pride in being a man and that's being enough and being different than women. Mm -hmm. And, and it does a good job of laying that out, uh, in my opinion, and kind of making that an accessible concept. Mm -hmm. Um, they, and the people are like, it's a man hating agenda. It's blah, blah, blah. Not really. Like if you interpret it that way, they were very accommodating and nice to the Kins. Like, the whole point was that they didn't have their own identity, so they sought, you know, solace in the in patriarchy, and we saw how e easily that corrupted them, and how it led to them taking things and trampling the identity of the Barbies in order to establish their own. And these are things that a lot of I don't know if Allie Beth specifically has mentioned it, but I know that other women in the conservative talk sphere have talked about the sexism that they faced, mm -hmm. and it's like. This movie's for you too. It's trying to talk for. It's trying to advocate for you too. You won't let it. Like, well, they hate feminism so much that they won't even like, like it makes them hate their own femininity too. Yeah, and it's like, well, they, yes, Barbie was a celebration of femininity and masculinity. Like there was a broad range of things going on, and I just don't like. I knew the second that they said patriarchy, it was going to trigger every conservative mm -hmm. because they think it's this thing that it's not, or they think that like we're crazy and that this yeah. system doesn't exist. Yes. You know, and, or in some religious cases, they think it's justified. It's the, or order they think, of Oh, it exists, but it's good. This yeah. is how it's supposed to be. And I just don't understand because it isn't man hating, but even if it was, there's nothing wrong with that because we have plenty of woman hating material and, ideas and philosophies already out in the world. You know, I'm so sorry we imagined a world that was girls rule. Yeah. Like I don't yeah, I That's mean, not reality. Can we have an escape for 2 hours? Like Yeah, when you're under when you're under the constant social pressure the that the women are, of course you want a separate place where all of those things are are not constantly following you and keeping you down. And it's like the critiques that I've heard on in our realm of things was that it wasn't feminist enough. Yeah. So I think it's Could've funny that they're like, you know, it's this woke pr progressive thing. I mean, not really. There was like, they didn't, you know, dive into like some deep intellectual discussion or talk about like intersectionality or anything like that. So it's just like the fact that they just consider anything that even like acknowledges the patriarchy is, is woke. It's just ridiculous to me. It feels like they... And it wasn't even mm -hmm. bad. Like, Ken just really got into horses and the Godfather. Yeah. Like, that's actually kind of funny. Like, we're mm -hmm. poking fun at toxic masculinity, and they're like, it's a man-hating romp. Yeah. It, uh, good. I wish it was, but it isn't. No. It's like a family fun film for for everyone. Yeah. With a message that applies it's, probably just as much to your life, Allie, as anybody else's. Those kinds of movies anymore. We don't produce non-political content. Everything has to have an agenda. Everything has to have an underlying progressive message. Oh, you're, you literally have a show about this. You're like right there at the we point. We just can't make non-political movies anymore. Can you have a non-political sentence out of your mouth? Yes, I'm Allie. Everything is politics. I'm sorry. From how you fucking make money to how you spend it to the way you dress, the way you look, your entire job, where you live, um obviously the laws, the shit that happens with children, the shit that happens in the media, the shit that happens with guns, the shit that happens with healthcare, every little fucking thing is political. You have to be tuned into this. I hate this shit. And why is it political? Did you see Oppenheimer? Did you see Sound of Freedom? Those were certainly fucking political. Everything is political. Yes, Ali, I'm, I regret to inform you that everything does in fact have context. Like, it has a time and a place it was made. It reflects the culture it came from. I'm sorry. This I'm sorry that we live in a society. Societies have politics. Art's going to have politics. It is what it is. Everything has politics. Sorry. Like, I mean, even them's the breaks. Barbie dolls themselves have a political agenda. Yep. Like, and a history, and they've been offensive at different times and mm -hmm. empowering at others. Like, and how do you not really know? interesting exploration of that, except since people who are left of you said they liked it, now you have to be against it. There's no way they're going to 
put out a movie that's just a bunch of pretty people having a good time with a normal rising action climax falling Did action conclusion pretty people yeah. having a good time give me the give me your elevator pitch for barbie now uh uh pr pretty people having a good time but yeah that's also baywatch and yeah, just Friends. fucking watch that it's a lot of or fun, just really. watch fast and the furious like we did type arc there's just no way that they're gonna do it so i didn't know anything about greta Typical Hollywood. so i didn't know you know what it was gonna be but i just had that expectation because so few so few movies or shows nowadays come out just because of entertainment you value. know what what i want to watch when i'm really in the mood for just pure entertainment no politics no drama i watch the chosen Mm -hmm. from angel studios let me play a little bit of the trailer first we better not because for this shit. i just want to show people if you didn't see the, the many many ads for this Ellie, that have I got been bills to pay. any kind of political messaging was very carefully excluded from any of these teasers or they trailers really think, or clips okay, that I'm we sorry, saw so here's a little bit literacy. of that i think conservatives thought it was going to be like an elf situation yeah. Which even Elf has political like, implications. Yeah. I mean, you, you know. Like they thought it was a fish out of water romp. You just said, well, I knew it was going to have an agenda. If you're going to make a Barbie movie in 2023, you're the average consumer of a Barbie movie like that nowadays is probably going to want you to address the all the stuff that Barbie represents, good, yes. bad, and indifferent. And that's what and they movie do. tried to do. There's they even a whole job. There's a whole, like, oh my god, I just... Yeah. It's also about, like, mother-daughter relationships. You don't have any comments on that, Allie? No, you only care that they were mad that the Kens brought patriarchy. No, I won't let you do just one appendectomy. But I'm a man. But not a doctor. Can I talk to a doctor? You are talking. Okay, there's our there's one sexism joke already. Yeah. Already. And you're, it's not political. You're not watching the trailer! You're not even watching it. To a doctor. I need a clicky pen. No. A sharp thing. No. There he is. Doctor. Did somebody get security. <laughs> okay, so you did kind of see an indication of what would it, it was going to be right in that last conversation with Ryan Gosling. But okay, I if I just saw the trailer, I would want to see that movie. Not knowing everything that I, I know it. now about our entertainment industry, 2010 me would have loved that movie because the 2010 version ever. of that movie would have been just funny and sweet and maybe pushing the 2000 no the 2010 version would have had like a lot more rape jokes in it guaranteed jesus and probably some slurs to throw in i don't want to think about 2010 that was they did that though in the movies yes what well, were you gonna say <laughs> not that the boundaries a little bit when it comes to sexual promiscuity and whatever and suggestive language and things like that. she does not have genitalia they're actually very that's a line in the movie that but back in 2010 like honestly 2006 oh, to 2012 oh, okay she's making a joke that 2010 they had promiscuous mo what the fuck are you talking about 2010 for Maybe that's when she went to college or something. I don't know. I think why she's, she's saying that her this. dumber, liberal -er -er self would have liked this movie, but now she's a smart, conservative, big lady who doesn't believe such terrible things as maybe men uh, are bad sometimes. Yeah, literally. Had some really no 2004 because it got to go back and get the notebook in there. Uh, 2004 to like okay, 2012 had some. 90, yeah, back in 1990. And if you want to get real technical, 87 is like really where things get interesting now. Cinema peaked with Fast Times. At really great high. entertaining movies. No, if we're being honest, Cinema peaked with Blade. Yeah. But Brie, tell us, like, what really happened? What was the plot? And then oh what God. were the obvious Spoiler themes alert, that were everybody. being portrayed? Yeah. Um, how outrageous it was that this was for kids. It's not for kids. It's I didn't PG think it was 13. for kids either. Yeah. I was very confused when people said that. I was yeah, like, it's PG not. It's rated PG-13. People may argue that. Anything that is not kid-friendly or I wouldn't even say not kid-friendly because I don't think it's inappropriate to talk to your children about sexism or racism or no, feminism. Any of it. But there were things that would be boring to a child. Yeah. I wouldn't say there was anything that was inappropriate. They'd probably be like, oh, the adults are talking, whatever. But let's let's see, you know, Barbie again. Yeah. Um. So st Margot Robbie plays stereotypical Barbie. Each Barbie in Barbie land has their own, like, 
you know, Dr. Barbie, Lawyer Barbie, etc. Um, and they all live in Barbie land. And it's a matriarchal society where women are in charge Whoa. of everything. And the Kens are just kind of there. And um, each Barbie has a Ken. And they don't do anything really. Um, and then one day, Barbie suddenly is like stricken with these uh, worries about mortality. And she doesn't know where they're coming from. And she she is told by Conservatives aren't afraid um, of Kate McKinnon's character well, that she has to go into the real they world. Think. There's a rift and she has to go Kate into the McKinnon real world. Kate McKinnon is the weird Barbie girl, <laughs> She plays right? a weird Barbie. Who's been played with too much or something. Yeah, which is a or good something. gag. Yeah. Um, you saw the movie, didn't you? <laughs> and she has to go into the real like world and find the little girl who's Squidward. playing with her. Is it wrong? We're going to fast forward because I don't want any spoilers, guys. Sorry, I'm protecting the gentlemen. Yeah, the kind of shit they would make jokes about was like, okay, all the Kens play um, Push by Matchbox 20. And they have like, like the war between the Kens is like funny, silly camp. A dr it's a dream ballet. And so it's like, they make fun of like, re like really, Ali, you are an evangelical Christian and you went to regular college. And you look like that. You're you're very attractive. You're telling me you've never had uh, some guy play a guitar at you? You're telling me you've never had a guy, like, make you watch The Godfather and talk all the way through it? Like, that's the kind of jokes they were making. There was nothing, like, explicitly political. They're just, like, so we're not even allowed to acknowledge matriarchy now. We're not even allowed to acknowledge sexism. We're not even allowed to acknowledge that sometimes men do things that are cringe. Like, it's not like, like, they... At the end of the movie, they worked together with the Kens. Like, you know that. Like, like order was restored. We're just making fun of it. Like, it's, it's called dark humor. You ever heard about it, Snowflake? Like, I don't understand that you guys' shit is so shaken by this. Barbie land for the women. <laughs> Female empowerment. Dolls. But they've always been bar baby dolls until Barbie came around. And then there's the slow motion scene of all these little girls, like, smashing their baby dolls, like, on rocks and, like destroying Obviously, their baby they want to destroy the family did you not catch that that was a reference to 2001 a space odyssey because there was also a, a shitload of references to a bunch of movies in this thing yeah. and it's very um it's it's really cool so it she's pays like tribute to a lot of different movies so uh, let's see what she has let's see what she's implying about this because now barbie exists. homage and then there's the slow motion scene of all these little girls like smashing their baby dolls like on rocks and like destroying their baby dolls because now barbie exists yeah and i just thought it was kind of uh, it was a little, like a little on the nose i don't think they were going for like abortion this is about abortion but how did y'all both come to that conclusion even if it was obviously it's abortion. more power no. to them like well that's what that's what the that's what the conservatives think abortion is they think they take the mm -hmm. baby out to the rocks like in spartan times yep. and throw it off the cliff um, no one thought that. What are, am I insane? I've seen the scene they're talking about. It's not a big spoiler because it's like two minutes into the movie, but it's these, it's that they don't want to play with the baby dolls because they, that's all they had. Now they want to play with the cool Barbies. At least broads are wild. It's, 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 but it's not, still a little it's destroying babies. And also it's like not true because girls still play with baby dolls. I know. I know. How come there be uh, dinosaurs if they're still chickens? I was or, just about to say, this literally baby. implies, this is like the missing link argument. There are still baby dolls. Yes. Yes. There were also like seven girls in that shot that like, there are more than that. Some of the girls probably wanted to keep their baby dolls. I don't know. Another thing, that teen girl, she has a speech when Barbie comes up to her. Sasha? Yes, Sasha. You um, saw this movie. She says, this yeah, is a quote I'm from good. the movie. You represent everything wrong with our culture. You destroyed the planet with your glorification of rampant consumerism. You fascist. That's what <laughs> the teenage girl says okay. to Barbie. Okay. Well, I'll let you keep going. Some I'll ask that, this question because I mean. it. I'll ask this question later because it could apply to everything that you're. Obviously, that moment in the movie is um, one of the characters is a teenage girl and she's like yelling at Barbie about all the. She's basically basically a plug in for like the typical feminist opinion about Barbie. Mm -hmm. So she's like saying, you know, you cause them to have bad body issues. You're unattainable. Um, you're destroying the world with your consumerism. Like. All that shit, you know, because there's been problems with Barbie, the the how to lose weight, don't eat, and, you know, math is hard Barbie mm -hmm. or whatever. To be like, this teenager is complaining about saying, like, what? 
And it would make sense. Like, obviously, Barbie's not a fascist. Like, she's... Fascist has become, like, shorthand for just somebody... Just it's mean. become shorthand for, like, a like a dictator-type bad person, even though yeah. that's not the definition. Yes. Um. So I think it was a commentary on just, like, that's just how teenagers talk. Like, whatever. But the fact that she, like, had a problem with them complaining about that... Like, I know that, like, a lot of conservatives are, like, you know... They, they have this, the twofold thought of like global warming isn't real, but also, we, mm-hmm. you know, we have dominion over the earth because of, um, Christianity. So like it's ours to destroy and it doesn't really matter anyway, because you know, we want to usher in end times, all, all that shit. Yeah. Why? Like, I still think that it's like a neutral unbiased opinion to say that like, it's not good that we produce all this plastic that literally never like dissolves. That's what she was saying. And like the over the buying of things like Ali Beth has several children. I don't know their genders and what toys they play with, but you're telling me even as a child, you're telling me you didn't get upset when like a Barbie had an outfit that you wanted, but you had to buy the Barbie and not just the clothes Mm -hmm. or like, Vice versa, like, that was really bad with Bratz. I always wanted the outfits that was on a different Bratz doll and stuff. But, like, that would be a part of that over-consumerism. That would be, a, like, you don't think it's good to, like, save money and, like, teach people about, like, life, enjoying life in, with non-material goods? But, no. Anything that's said in this movie is woke, so. Um, the other thing I found funny was there. there's a man playing a woman, playing a Barbie in this movie. There you go. There you go. There's we the did, fucking we, transphobia. We just oh my god. We just didn't wait long enough. Movie. Okay. Um. So, there's also a trans. Yeah. Uh, like man identifying as a woman. There is also a trans woman in this movie, Doctor Barbie. Yeah. And they don't talk about her gender identity in this movie. She's just a regular Barbie doing regular stuff. How terrifying. Right, that's what I mean. The, yeah. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. oh, okay, got it, got it. Um, oh, okay, she doubled down on the transphobia. Yes. Oh, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. So this is actor Hari Neff, I think is his name, but I'm gonna... he's playing oh my Dr. God. Barbie, which I thought okay. was... You didn't have to do this. You didn't have to bring this up and, and go this far out of your way. You suck. You both suck. Okay, and... She's a fucking famous actress. You know what I will say about fucking Allie Beth? You're not even good enough for Fox News. Just this whole movie is about patriarchy and feminism and, and whatnot. And I just thought it was really ironic that they hired a man and took a woman's job. For oh, this my movie. God. Patriarchy is a man stealing a woman's job. Is it yeah. not? But OK. Yeah. Does um, it exist And then there's not? a big issue of Ken. Barbie doesn't like Ken in this movie. She finds him annoying. At one point, she says, I don't want you here. At one point in the movie, she says, I don't want you here. Give me a line with less context. That's the challenge. All he wants okay. is to be treated decently and to be respected. And, and he is! Oh my god! Yeah. It's pretty clear in the film. Um, but I found it odd because he Ken was created to be a companion for Barbie, like the toys. Um, and the whole movie, he's just, his moral is he has to learn to be apart from her. Um, so it's just, it's over, it, he, the he's overwhelming point an individual is, how is freedom. This, how is that bad? Yeah, it's like not. What? Men need to be, men need to do things. I thought they that, were fans of men who went their own way. Men need to do need things men. that give them identity and other than being men. Women don't enjoy men. And it's yeah. because Shocking. of the patriarchy. This, and this one particular Barbie did not like one particular Ken. Yeah. Now who's making generalizations? Yeah, the Barbies in the didn't end, even men are still subservient to women, and that's back. how but that's it's intended to. Yeah, Ken stole her literal fucking house, but you know, B. So, so my question is: Do you think it's a promotion of that idea or a critique of that idea? Because there, I've yeah. seen both takes. Because it's so on the nose. Because it's so obvious. Because. Everyone does, or it seems like a lot of people do, end up feeling bad for Ken. And because she goes back to the patriarchy, 
the so-called patriarchy. No, she doesn't. Um, by going to the real world, some people that are doesn't... saying, no, this has a conservative message. They're making fun, like in that Sasha speech, they're making fun of young people for saying things like that when young people are super consumeristic yeah. and then calling someone else, calling Barbie, like the reason for consumerism, the reason for fascism, whatever. Um, so what do you think? Do you think it's a promotion of those ideas happen. or a critique of them? Number one, it didn't happen. Number two, you know, yeah, okay. I can agree with you that it could have gone even harder on some of its points. It could have maybe more directly addressed uh, patriarchy in our world. And uh, maybe its metaphor was a teensy bit incomplete um, in terms of how it was implemented. I can agree with you on all of those things, but I don't think we're having the same conversation. Uh, I think it's a promotion. I think that's a stretch. People saying that it's critiquing those progressive ideas. There are there there are a couple lines where I'm like, oh, they like almost got it. Sasha at one point is talking about Barbie and she's like, why are you like following that nut job? And then she stops herself and she goes, I mean, like um, intellectually challenged. <laughs> so it's like that's supposed to be a joke. Yeah. But uh, but do you understand the punchline? Do you get why that's funny? Yeah. Making fun of like the liberal tendency to try to over PC something, but still make the like make yeah. the bad choice be still be problematic. Yeah, like that's the joke that I got. Yeah. Um, so it might be played with like a little bit of humor, but the overall message of the story is is not that. It's yeah. not we're making fun of this. So but- why do you think they have her going back to the patriarchy then? And the, basically they, showing the matriarchy is not fun. And it's like the way that it was achieved is through manipulation. Because she's used to shit in the lens of patriarchy. She thinks that everything has to be one to one. She thinks that if patriarchy is men in charge um, and they abuse women and oppress women and, and all that stuff, then that's what it must be to have feminism or matriarchy. She thinks that it has to be women in charge uh, abusing their power because that's what patriarchy is. Yep. But that's not what it was. Like everything was, Mm -hmm. was going great. They had like a lot of it was about like self-esteem and like beauty standards and like just what it's like to like exist. And, and like Ali really could have benefited from America Ferreira's speech about, you know, having to, live up to all these certain roles and be perfect and be a mother and have a job and look pretty and stay skinny and all these things. Like that was a part of her big speech. Mm -hmm. Like that's very relevant to a lot of people of many genders. And so I just don't understand why she thinks that because it sounds like she may or may not have seen the movie. I don't know. Yeah. First of all, they didn't even have in Barbie world the thing like they don't have the same problems that we have out here in the real world. So it's not like it would have mattered anyway. Like nobody is getting their reproductive rights taken away in Barbie land because they can't reproduce, Mm -hmm. you know, like everybody's allowed to vote. So they don't deal with like voter discrimination and like there isn't drugs or poverty or abuse. Plus it was fun and awesome the the barbie land yeah it was ruined when the kins brought patriarchy yeah they were living all peacefully together like i don't understand if anything it's like a promotion of like socialism yeah but they're not seeing that they just heard patriarchy and then they got stuck on it for two fucking hours yep not even realizing that maybe all that wouldn't have happened if Ken had his own identity and went out and, you know. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, I mean, you could almost say that there's commentary on incel culture in this. You could say because of the way Mm -hmm. that like Ken was not validated and the way that he was taught that he wasn't, he didn't have an identity and that he, you know, whatever, like he turned kind of evil. And then even just like, it's about how people treat each other. It's about how like. Barbie apologized to Ken for him taking her house. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's, that's something interesting to talk about. But instead they're like, she had to return to the Patriot. No, she didn't. You did not see the movie. The Ken's could build new things. They're more than welcome to innovate and capitalism, but they didn't do that. They took Barbie, all the Barbie stuff. She even was nice to him at the end. Mm -hmm. She did the thing you wanted. She was like, I don't have to have girls night every night. You can come over sometimes. How is that? Saturdays are for the boys culture out here. 
But somehow this movie's the problem. I mean, they don't point those those things out though. Yeah. She goes back to to the patriarchy, back to the real world, because she now has these feelings well, that she can't escape. So it's more of a like now I'm a human and I need to grapple with like the good and bad of being a human. But at the end, it says, you know, fine. in, in Barbie oh, no, land, the men have asked for some terrifying. leadership roles. Now and that, you know, at the end woke. of the movie, they ask, you know, can maybe we have one man on the Supreme Court in Barbie land? And President Barbie says, no, but we can maybe put one of you like at a lower circuit court position. And the narrator says, maybe one day in Barbie land, um, the men will have just as much power as the women have in the real world. And so, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty it, obvious what they're trying. That's literally true, though. Yeah, that's like, how like, it- how are you like she is a part of a religious system and political system that believes that men should be in charge. And not only should they, but they are. Yeah. And that women must be subservient because that is God's way. Like, if she had her fucking way, I mean, maybe, I don't know how deep she is into it. I don't think she's one of the women shouldn't vote ones because she's very political. Yeah. But she is so outspoken of things in the church. She thinks she knows everything. She thinks she understands. She thinks patriarchy is a myth. How is it a myth if that is literally what you believe in your religion? That women have to be under men. That they should not have leadership roles. That they should not speak in church. That they should be at home, literally being submissive to their husband, serving him. You tell me how that isn't patriarchy and how that isn't, you know, an open door for fucking abuse. And it's like shit that we've already proven is going on in the church. These abuses of power, like, and it's just, well, they have an agenda. It's literally true. We've got how many, how many women on the Supreme Court? Three by my count. Oh, a whole three. Wow. Like after years, decades and decades of lower court appointments before they finally got, um, Sandra was the first one. Um, Like in the eighties. Yes. They're making a commentary and a little tongue in cheek joke about, about the amount of power that women have in the real world. That's like a very valid thing to do. I don't understand why you're like, wow, what a stupid joke. Like it's true. Are we not allowed to acknowledge it? Mm Mm-hmm. Or are we acknowledging that women should have been on the Supreme Court earlier? It's also not real what happened in the movie, right? You know that, like, that's, like, this is just a fantasy. It's just a thought experiment. Yeah. That. They make shit so, like, I don't understand, like, their little comments, like, ha female empowerment. They're the type to make fun of girl power as if there aren't people literally shouting white power right now. Because of the institutions that we have in place in America, because of this white supremacist society that we all live under and benefit from, if you're the same shade of skin that we are, yeah. it's just completely unfair. And... It just, yeah, it just shows how ignorant she is because of the prison industrial complex, the war on drugs, extreme poverty. Like, people don't have the choices that you have. They don't get the choice to stay home and raise their kids or not. They have to fucking survive. They have to work multiple jobs. They have to rely on community more. And she is just up here being like, isn't it crazy how, like, women think that they're better than men? That is not what the fuck we're talking about down yep. here on planet Earth. Like, can we focus on some shit that actually fucking matters? Besi- like, um, And we know from every data set that's available to us that that's not what makes people happy. I'd like to see Being that. alone, Those being childless in general. Barbie is not alone. Yeah. She has a fulfilling life full of friends and adventure yeah. and career. And, you know, full disclosure here, I did have a midge, okay? <laughs> How dare you? And, like, we, I would borrow the pregnant belly and the little baby and put it on other Barbies when it was their time to have a child. Like, women have multifaceted lives where they do multiple things. Some of them have children, some of them don't. But we're all trying our best in this fucked up world. And we don't need people like you trying to gaslight, your favorite word, us, that these systems aren't real. Like, saying patriarchy isn't real is like saying gravity isn't real. Like, Barbie was even particularly kind to Midge. Like, saying that Midge being excluded from things was unfair. Letting, letting, saying that Midge should have more space in the Barbie community. Literally, opening space up 
for moms in a community like that. But that doesn't fit the narrative, does it, Allie? Happy. And men are still men and women are still women. And whether you like it or not, we still have different inclinations. We still have different strengths. Yeah, everybody's uh, different. We still have uh, different abilities that drive us to occupy Barbie different spheres. Barbie does not question any of She's things. trying to talk about the, the realm of domesticity. Yes, very Jefferson. She's trying to, but she's not quite saying it. Yeah. She's like, we're different. We're good at different things. Yeah, you know, that's true. Everybody on Earth is different and with a unique personality and a unique story. And they're all special in their own way. And that's what I'm going to pretend that she meant. Everybody's different. <laughs> How horrific it is. The all methods the used to, um, to buy these people from Africa, bring them over to we're the in West, Florida enslave now. them, what slavery. chattel slavery looked like, how harsh the conditions were. But they're also going to teach them about the different forms of forms of slavery that was happening that were happening in the world. And by the way, teaching them that these Africans sold into slavery were sold by other Africans oh, who were we also go. enslaving them. Well, <laughs> you know, black people, shut the fuck What's up. Imp- I, I can't do it don't like this anymore. We're done. That was unpleasant. I I'm glad we had you all. Expected it, but not expected it. This is my first full Allie Beth thing that I've watched. I didn't like it. Didn't make me feel good. This is why you got to do the episode. Right? You got to suffer more. Yeah, I'm going to edit it now. Mm-hmm. And you're watching it. And don't we appreciate that? <laughs> yeah, so, um, sorry if we spoiled things. I feel like we definitely did. We'll put a spoiler at the begin- tag at the beginning of this. Yes, we should. We I feel like between say. us and Allie, you pretty much know what the movie's yeah. about. Um, Hopefully you've already seen the movie. It's great. It is. It's fun. It's got an amazing soundtrack. It does talk, it touches a little bit about like surface level feminism. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't call it woke. It has I, some I loved good it. Messages. It made me it, fucking cry. It had some good messages. It makes you it think could have it's not just about things. girls and boys. It's also about life mm-hmm. and your purpose and everything. And it's just a wonderful movie. I just think it's great. I just, I just Using the it. toys of our nostalgia to examine existential dread and the social forces that keep us all down. Yeah. Not just... So we need intersectionality, Allie. The white heterosexuals that Allie thinks society hates. in a small town. (laughs) It took me a second. I forgot about Jason Aldean at the beginning. I would like to forget about more of Jason Aldean's career. Oh my God, what's that song? Chilling like a dirt road, sitting back eating frogs and toads. (laughs) That's not the lyrics. He didn't write that song. I wrote that. I hope you all enjoyed the video. We worked kind of hard on it um and see barbie or don't i don't care it's a free country yeah um please remember to drink water and if you're in the so heat hot. dome like we so are hot. stay inside yeah. the love of god this is summer's Do not re- go out there this is summer's revenge and it's coming for you yes stay indoors stay cool wherever you can um follow us on social media we're real big on instagram i've been doing more tiktoks lately um we have Patreon and um, YouTube channel memberships. They do the exact same thing. Um, you get the same benefits, access to the Discord. We've been doing uh, Sister Web's watch parties. New season. Come chat mm-hmm. with us about it. It's a hoop. Um, we have all kinds of random little behind-the-scenes videos. Um, there is a 10% merch discount with uh, these memberships. And um, I pretty much just love you and think you're the best if you do that. Um, also... We have some fire yes. new merch. Absolutely out right now. ridiculously so, cool new stuff. It is so cool. Um we've been working with other artists, which has helped us like expand because mm-hmm. you know we you have see some new we skills, got a new little stick. bit of skill, but so we've got the um eyes of Reverend Jen, which was done by the incomparable Max Holler. Like I wanted to cry when I saw this. Like, yes. this is my dream come true to have something that is reminiscent of anything to do with Tammy Faye. Mm-hmm. They also made um, this uh, Jesus and his 12 followers uh, sticker, which is incredible. It's super funny. Um, and then and then Lauren Marvell made this amazing, like, tarot card of James and I. And it has so many little inside jokes and references. The cowboy hat? Are you kidding me? Things the we had forgotten. Like that we talked about. So this is available as a shirt, as a sticker. I finally have, drum roll please, 
vampire ho merch. Woo! So if you run across Sister Cindy this this year, you know you can wear God Loves You in a Gay Way or this one. They're both appropriate. I was just like, or if you, you know just, them goth girls are going to eat this up. The if you're just know, proud of your you're status. being proud of vampirism um, and hodum, then you, you pick it up. But it's that one was also good. made by Lauren Marvell. Yep. Obsessed. We're going to work together a lot probably. And then, of course, we have the stuff that James and I made. We have Sexually Broken Loser, kind of play on a girl defined kind of idea. And then we've got lots of logo tees. And then the Vacation Bible School of Rock tour shirt. Go watch that, by the way, if you have Wear it. my face on your chest. <laughs> and um, yeah, just good shit in the merch store. Of course, you don't actually have to buy anything. Of course. Uh, but your viewership I would is always if you enough. Liked, commented, subscribed. Hope you Send enjoyed. A good vibe. Hope you enjoyed us ranting at Allie Beth, ranting at Barbie. So I thought this would be fun that you'd enjoy it. Next week, we are taking a break because it's my birthday. Woo! Birthday girl. So I'm going to take a break. And then next week, we will resume. Hope you guys. I hope you're having a good time. And I hope you, uh, yeah, hope you see the Barbie movie. Stay woke. I think you'll have fun. Uh, love you guys. We be love you all so much. Y'all Keep us afloat. Make good choices. And, um... You better, because we need you. Yeah. Just, uh, do your best. And you look like that. Smoking hot. Wait, hold on. And you look like that. Very attractive. I don't want it to sound like I want to fuck her. Shh.